just before sunrise in mid-February. It's minus 23 with a wind chill of minus 37. Most people are still in bed, but here it's a hot bed of activity, prepping the planes for a busy day of flying, carrying people, patients, and cargo to remote locations along Labrador's north coast. But with the unpredictable weather, those plans can change in an instant. We're seeing a lot more inclement weather, inclement weather that certainly uh, brings flight interruptions. It's uh, more exciting, I think, than, uh, than flying the bigger aircraft. It's more challenge. I got thousands of stories. The Labrador Coast, you always got to expect the non-expected. Air Borealis has nine twin otters, the aircraft of Canada's north. Owned by two indigenous groups, the Innu and the Inuit, operated by PAL Airlines. The partnership is less than a year old. Its logo, an Inukshuk, green for the northern lights. Stones representing the communities it serves. Rigolet, Makovic, Postville, Hopedale, Notwishish, and Nain. Accessible only by plane for most of the year, with no road or even water access in the winter months, these communities are at the mercy of Mother Nature. Each location with a different topography and weather. Every day, travel, food, medical supplies and appointments. They all depend on these planes. If you have rain, drizzle and fog in, in St. John's or Corner Brook, you turn on your windshield wiper as well. For somebody living in Nain or in Natoshish, uh, that means that the flight is not coming today. Navigating the north coast of Labrador is challenging at best. The weather, it can change in an hour or it can hold stormy for days. The captains here at Air Borealis use forecasts issued by Nav Canada, Environment Canada, weather observations taken along the coast of Labrador, but most importantly, they use the decades of experience they have from flying up this very coastline. Neil Purchase has flown twin otters out of Happy Valley Goose Bay for the past 15 years. We base a lot of stuff out of Halifax with our uh, METAR and TAV and the GFA. They're also looking for the local knowledge of the strip operators, the, uh, the agents that are on the coast. And after a number of years, most of these people got a pretty good grasp on the weather. First thing we check here in the morning is our weather and our operational flight plan. So we'll have a route picked out by our dispatcher. And then, of course, we got to get the weather that corresponds with that route. In 31 years, Kevin Han has flown through it all. There have been some good flights. There have been some uh, not so good flights. Pretty well seen uh, every weather condition that's up there. Uh, the winds are always blowing fairly hard. 30 knots is a calm day. This morning in Maine, it's uh, 30 knots of wind and 32 below. So uh, you get that kind of situation and uh, visibilities are down. And uh, yeah, you gotta kind of watch what you're doing with the weather systems. And uh, if the weather is uh, marginal or no good, uh, we just call the shot and we don't go. In some cases, it's a race against time, like a recent medevac out of Rigolet. We knew we had an hour to get there. A uh, young baby got born, and it's not like your typical hospital setting. The lady came out, she was in the back of a comatic, the nurse was straddled across the comatic, and the baby was wrapped. So yeah, it's definitely an interesting place to work. Everybody got back Everybody here got out, safe and sound. As the sun sets in beautiful, calm, happy Valley Goose Bay, it's the winds in Nain, now gusting to 100 kilometers per hour, that have our attention and our pending plans for the morning. We have a flight that was supposed to be going to Nain. Uh, the wind has really picked up, and so they've decided it's too windy, so they're so gonna go to Oakdale instead. That's correct. How often does this happen where they have to redirect? Not a lot, but there is a, there is a percentage that comes into play where some days you're planning uh, on a forecast that's built at six in the morning, come three o'clock in the afternoon, the forecast didn't play out the way it was meant to. Okay, so tomorrow morning, we're supposed to be going to Nain. Uh, what do you think our chances are for getting up there tomorrow, say mid to late morning? 
Uh, right now, they're calling for a gust of 30 knots up on the northern part of the coast. Uh, you're sitting right between two low pressure systems, uh, one moving in, one moving out, one dying. So right now, the weather early in the mor tomorrow morning, the weather will cooperate. The winds, I'm not sure. And I don't know if it's going to be a large window. By lunchtime, we could have some snow moved into uh, Nain and Hopedale. Yeah, with that next low coming in. That's right. Yeah. So our window is short tomorrow for Nain. And that it is. Yeah. Okay, so fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers right. crossed. Good luck. Thank you. All right, on. see you guys. Day two in Labrador, mid-February. A snowy morning in Happy Valley Goose Bay. About a mile and a half of visibility along the runway. But as we prep for our flight to Nain, it's the winds we're watching. The winds can be very uh, unpredictable in Nain and they can uh, get quite strong. Um, yesterday, the main, main winds went to uh, 110 kilometers, uh, and that can happen very quickly, and it can die out very quickly. The Labrador coast, you always got to expect the non-expected. Can I just lay myself on? Yeah. yeah. This twin otter is supposed to carry us to the most northern community on the coast, but more importantly, the food. With more snow and gusty winds on the menu for tonight and into tomorrow, this needs to get to Nain today. We're always looking at least two days out when we see a, a weather system moving in. Uh, it's not uncommon for us to you know, basically call up the wholesalers and say, look, we're going to have bad weather on Tuesday or Thursday. You know, get the food in early, we'll get it moved early. This food has an expiry date. It's traveled all the way from Montreal by ship to St. John's, by truck to Bay Roberts, before hitting the road across the island. Then from the Straits to here in Happy Valley Goose Bay, the last link in the supply chain before going up the coast. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays is basically the big days for items going to the coast. Tuesdays are primarily for moving milk and dairy and vegetables like carrots and turnip. Thursdays produce like lettuce, broccoli, and spinach. And then those are moved to the coastal communities uh, late Thursday into Friday to be on the store shelves to be sold while people are picking up their groceries for the weekend. These oranges, apples, eggs, and yogurt all bound for name. Set to hit the shelves at the local grocery store later today. But food isn't the only cargo that heads north. We can go back to an era when there was one flight every couple of days that would get in and that plane would have a bag of mail or two bags of mail for uh, each of the communities. In recent times with you know the internet and the ability to do online shopping which is really trendy around the world but where really you don't have the same access to shopping centers to be able to go into a store so people are doing the online shopping. Whatever an individual would do in downtown Toronto or Calgary or Vancouver in online shopping, it's happening in coastal Labrador. People uh, are looking for the best deal. Big ticket items like bikes and snowblowers, packages from online retailers Walmart, eBay and Amazon, all shipped by plane. But just how much gets put onto an aircraft all depends on the weather. The Twin Otter is loaded the forecast all clear for flying. Ready to go with our captain and first officer. A one hour and 15 minute flight to Nain. And we're lucky. The forecast calling for very light winds. Are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm excited. And especially because I've never been to the North Coast, so I'm excited. Down the runway, in the air, into the clouds, and off to Nain. Okay, we're about 
halfway through the flight. How are conditions looking? Uh, conditions are uh, good. We got uh, fairly smooth skies here. We're probably going to see some sunshine here very soon. The winds are at 340 at uh, 8 knots. Uh, we're looking at a temperature of uh, minus 23 in Nain right now. How will you uh, decide how you're going to land the aircraft? We always try to land uh, into the wind. The wind right now, it's uh, showing to be uh, 90 degrees across the runway. So uh, it, right now, it could still be either runway. A twin otter, roughly 8,000 feet above Nain, about to land on a gravel runway constructed in the early 1980s. At just 2,000 feet, it's the shortest runway on the Labrador coast and one of the most challenging for the pilots. Wedged between the ocean and a valley with two hills, potentially creating a tailwind at one end of the runway and a headwind at the other. We're not the only flight landing in Nain this morning. With the winds becoming light and current ideal landing conditions, and with some soon-to-be stormy weather on the way, the runway quickly becomes a busy spot, including a flight from Boise's Bay and an RCMP supply plane. Most importantly, a Skedivac. That's the plane that carries people to scheduled medical appointments in Happy Valley Goose Bay. While these passengers board, the cargo from our flight is loaded into Comatix. Snowmobiles are the only way to get around. And the fastest and smoothest ride to the store is across the ice. From the plane to the Comatic to Big Land Groceries Warehouse. Boxes of oranges, apples, yogurt, eggs. If the weather keeps a flight from landing, it keeps these necessities off the shelf. The longest recent stretch without Air Borealis landing in all six communities, 16 days. We rely on it very, very much. I think the struggle that I have is with telling the customers that it's, it's not here yet. And it's just a waiting process for it to come in. I usually stock up so I won't run out. I stock up on potatoes and carrots and turnip and the more the hard produce. It's not just a waiting game for food. It's being able to pay for it. Are they mine? Huh? Well, I just tried to buy a roast that was less than a kilo. 9.945 is $40. I put it back. No, or no. I didn't find no. it. I didn't find it. I can't afford that. Usually, uh, we can, we will get produce and that, but it, it'll be old and, uh, you know, not as, not as fresh as it used to be in past years, I don't think. Mr. Caribou, that's for sure. A, a roast of caribou less than a kilo wouldn't cost $40. Uh, so re really hard. And, you know, I, I, I feel really bad for uh, uh, young families who, who don't have good income. Uh, it must be very difficult to feed, like to buy yogurt and these kind of things for, that kids enjoy. Uh, it must be hard. Arlene Akusik knows the struggles of providing for her young family in name. One of the most expensive items? diapers. 
A pack of 132 can cost about $90 in a store. So she shops online for everything. It's cheaper, but the shipping is still like $100. If I were to go home now and my son doesn't have diapers, then I would, wouldn't know what to do because it's not my payday yet. And I, like, I struggle through each pay, pay week. So I just make it and then if it don't come in, then I won't have no pampers. I'll have to borrow or whatever. I'll bargain, try to find the cheapest I could find and just anything my kids would need, I'll go to the internet and get whatever they need. It's mid-afternoon and time to catch our flight. A short but sweet trip. <laughs> we load our gear and head back to the plane. And back down the coast before any weather can slow us down. It's great to finally see name, to put a picture to the name on the weather maps. And it's clear that even though we didn't see any storms on this trip, weather is everything along the coast of Labrador.